The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, and thank you for joining us today. And it's good to see uh, so many of you on, on the call. Um, so this is our second webinar. Um, and uh, this month, actually, we're opening it to questions. So if you have a, if you have a question uh, that you need answers, please uh, type it in the box. We'll aim to answer those uh, questions individually uh, post the webinar. But um, just, just so you know, I'm Jim Osmond, the CEO and founder of the Spin-Off Report and the Distress Report. Um, in this brief webinar today, we're looking to give you an insight on what we do and, and ultimately why we do it. Uh, Ryan, our CEO, would take you through how we help our clients maximize value with the age of our model portfolio. And finally, Jonathan, our deals analyst, will take you through the most valuable special situations out there at the moment, the way we look at them, and, uh, and, and give you the investment edge beyond the street. So, um, so do feel free to, uh, to write your questions uh, in the box. Um, for, for a brief, quick overview, the company was established in 2005 with the purpose of providing something different and something that challenged the traditional mainstream research. We wanted to set up a firm that found the edge in the situation rather than the traditional, and in our opinion, oversimplistic view on what's cheap and expensive, uh, which is generally provided then, was provided then, and, and even still now on a broader basis. Um, our view are not only the fundamentals, but we look at the technical considerations of the breakup, uh, as well as any technical anomalies that may happen uh, in, in terms of the corporate event, and as well as the insiders. It's enabled us to become the leader in the world at analyzing special situations. So really to ask you questions um, and why you joined this web webinar, what, why do we exist, and, and why, you, why so many of you listening in. Um, firstly, and, and, and keeping in line with the theme, uh, we believe you need more ideas, uh, specifically good ideas. Our screening process would take an event that we believe to be undercovered. We would then screen it for qualitative and quantitative measures. And finally, make a judgment call using our experience on whether we believe the event can move the price to value. We analyze over 100 companies a year and produce on around 70 of them. So again, how can you trust us? It's a question that we believe is the, is the, is the biggest one on everybody's mind and no one ever asks. We, we, we make every effort to make sure our analysis is from the facts. We make no secret that, our, that everything we gather is publicly sourced and again, factual in its nature. Um, we're one of the few firms in the world that use our own numbers. We have our own analysts and we have our own analyst team that's been together since 2007. Um, and, and, and Ryan will take you through in a minute on, on, on how those predictions have actually panned out against a broader market. Lastly, what is our edge? Um, like I say, I use this word repeatedly over and over again. Um, quite simply, we challenge what the mainstream writes. Um, we're not interested in, in covering something. We're interested in finding out what, what, what is the difference. Um, we're going to seek out the investment opportunity or particular angle and, and, and overall make sure there's a good probability that the odds are in the client's favor before, before we present the idea. So without further ado, um, thanks for your time. Is, uh, this is Ryan Mendy and he'll take you through our model portfolio. Thank you, Jim. And uh, really, one of the things that stand out uh, for us, if anything, is that you know we're here to give you the edge with ideas you can trust. And so, in that, one of the reasons why, when uh, when, when we started out the company, we wanted to build a track record. We want to, because I don't think you sell research without the ability to say what you've what your calls have done. You go from research, you go from the sell side to the buy side. The the dev development is is that you want to be able to prove that you can make more money than the market. And so in that, this is how we came about with our track record. So as you can see there, um, in the last seven years since we started up, we uh, back from o um, on the deck uh, 07, we decided that what we would do is actually build this track record, $100 million nominal, um, and what we do is we start allocating to the market. Now, as we did, the situations naturally started showing their edge and demonstrating the value. So, done an 83% outperformance, that's wonderful, but it's that, in our view, actually internally, it's not enough. Um, so, but let's look at what it's done versus the indices. So, over the last 78 months to the end of last, we've, uh, we've done essentially 115%. The uh, what stands out for me most most notably there is the event driven index. Uh, if you look at uh, the global space, there up nine percent. So we're doing ten times that, and uh, and if anything, relatively two times whatever the uh, whatever ever major index you can take a look at. Now. So if we take a look at our performance there, you can see that we're the grey one. Obviously, I guess we'd be terrible if we were the red one. Um, and that's where um, here we we really want to be able to demonstrate to you 
what it is that we can do um, when it comes down to measuring the accountability of our uh, of our recommendations uh, to clients there so with four times the s and p five hundred over the last over the last seven, nearly seven years and i guess uh, you know equally much more than the uh, the world index it's a, it's for us for our clients more importantly it's a demonstrable uh, track record whereby they can look to this, look at our current situations and look forward to consider actually what it is that we're, we're able to deliver. Now, well, actually, just before I leave this chart, one of the things that I find very interesting is is something that's uh, most uh, you know the asset managers will want to be able to, uh, and allocators will want to be able to take a view on. If the golden rule, if you lose 50% of your money, it's going to cost, it's going to take you 100% to get it back. And that is where um, I find this interesting here because you see with the event-driven space and the special situations, you have that edge on your book where if it's properly analyzed, you can get back into the returns quicker than the, the, than the, uh, than the index. And then in the index there, you see it took, us a, it took us a year. It took the indices five and six years to get back into the money. So let's go back and have a look at uh, some what's happening in, in spin-offs at the moment. There's a new record high for 2014. It's going to be over 120 newly listed companies by 2015. Here's just the chart and overlay of actually what's actually happening. We've got um, the, and what's really driving is the potential and the predicted spin-offs. They're, they're gonna, really going to drive the growth here. So we do two things at the spin-off report, and that's that we both predict, um, uh, we, we, we cover globally uh, uh, announced them, and, and we predict uh, spin-offs. And we also uh, cover the special situations that we believe are out there that, um, uh, that are massively undercovered and misunderstood. So and the key way we go about doing that, as Jim would have uh, alluded to earlier, is that it's answering the real questions that people want to know. So what if the company was restructured? What's the most attractive and valuable investment out of the two or the situation for future investors? Because if you're going to be early and we're going to get you in early, how's that, how's that price going to go to value? And then ultimately, what are the real risks that are, that are being uh, ignored? And, and ultimately, the best time to invest, I'll come on to that on the next slide, and the takeover potentials, M&A. Very interested in this. A uh, third of spin-offs actually get taken over within two years. And a lot of our special situations, like Micros, you'll just seen, got taken over by Oracle, um, KPN last year. Massive returns. And this is where it's, it's about the timing and getting in early. And is it and knowing is the stock undervalued at the current present standard. So in summary, what we did with we actually uh, to be a first mover advantage, we actually got a thousand of the uh, world's most valuable companies by market cap, and figured out if they were to restructure and spin off, what could they do? And so we've found a hundred companies now that we believe actually can do that. Now let's take a look at um, the research process and what we actually do. We cover we, from a day one of announcement. We'll put we'll have uh, we'll cover it. We'll have the facts. Uh, stripping out from what's a speculation. We'll have, within the first weeks, we'll have an early analysis, and we'll fo and then follow up with that with our full analysis. On the day one, when the uh, trade split, say like it's time the other week, we would have told you about the fact that there would have been, uh, there have been necessary reasons to, uh, to continue holding off for the rest of the index sellers to come through. We'll update that with, uh, with a new analysis, and then ultimately look to advise you when, this, uh, when the stock's worth selling. Now we've got, um, let's take a look at a case study here. We have like a Ingersoll Rand and a Legion just recently over the last 18 months. So your stock would have uh, uh, announced. We would have put that, you see how that measures out there, we would have put that announcement out to you. We would have advised to buy the stock in our first piece of research, seeing the value in it. The first company release would have come out on the prospectus, that 500-page document that no one likes to read. Then, um, But we do, funny enough. But what we've got here then is the full analysis that comes out before the, uh, before the, the actual uh, spin date. Then that's where we're on the phone to you. As you can see with all the other buttons there, we're there to tell you exactly what's happening and get you involved in the stock on the price level that we suggested it should. Now, what we had here was ALLE um, opened up at 50, way too high. We said it should open up at 41, 40.08 40 actually. And then what we, uh, and then that's where we're going to say that this is where you should be buying this stock, down at this level. So some smart people got in lower than us as well. 
Um, and now that's but talking about that, and that's where what we saw from here from 41 the stock ended up going up to 55 within a couple of months and that's when we were on the phone to our clients telling them now it's time to get out now it's time to sell we can't put it we, you know we can, we're, we're good at predicting the future but we're not clairvoyant and this is one way that we've managed to uh, uh, generate for our clients um, a, an IIR of 82 percent here so having said that Having got the, uh, caught your uh, caught your consideration for what it is that we actually do to um, um, the hard work we do at 150 stocks that we cover per year to get you those ones that 10 that dozen that actually make real money. What I'm going to do now talk to you about some situations that actually have um, the, some edge on them now that we believe you can make money on. If you want, if you've got any questions, please tap them in. I'm going to hand you over to Jonathan now. Great. Thanks, Ryan. Uh, so you probably would have seen over the last uh, few weeks, or actually since the last time we had this webinar, there's been a few uh, names um, being announced in the market with regards to spin-offs. So names such like Barnes & Noble, B BKS, that was announced yesterday, Newcastle Investment Corp, BEA, Aerospace, so BEAV is a ticker. And yeah, all of these have recently announced they're breaking up, and they've been added. these names have been added to our calendar of over 50 major global spin-offs, uh, which are going to be taking place at the end of this year, leading into early next year. So now I want to, I want to highlight three current special situations to you uh, that will give you substantial returns on your investment, which are, one, Ryanair, so Ryanair Inc., not to be mistaken with uh, Ryanair, so ticker R-Y-N. Second is going to be Liberty Interactive Corp., so L-I-N-T-A. And then thirdly, it's going to be uh, American Realty Capital Property, so ARCP. Now, so looking at Ryanair Inc., so R-Y-N, now this is a $6 billion market cap international forestry products company, and it will be spinning off its performance fibers business, which is going to be named Ryanair Advanced Materials Inc., so ticker for that is going to be R. YAM, as you see on the screen. Now, it's actually going to be spinning off next week, Monday, which is June the 30th. And as we do for every piece of analysis, we focus on the fundamentals, the technicals, and the insiders. And the core reason why we like this story um, is mainly on the fundamentals and the insiders. So on the fundamentals side, we actually think RYAM is going to be a takeover play. And the reason why we say that is because, uh, well, firstly, it's the leading position is a high cellulose fiber uh, specialties business. Um, it's also a high barrier to entry stock. And, and we would have seen last year um, there's been some consolidation in the industry itself. Uh, so companies in the specialties chemical sector are being highly sought after in terms of targets. And Buckeye was one of those names that happened last year. And uh, if you look at the insiders, just moving quickly to the insiders, a lot of the key management team, they're actually moving from the parent company over to the spin-off entity. So chairman and CEO, Mr. Boyton, he's actually moving over to the spin-off side. And I know RYAM, so supporting the argument of the M&A angle, uh, they actually recent, uh, recently hired their senior vice president, um, who's had around 20, 25 years of M&A experience at Bank of America, Merrill Lynch. And he's going to be on the board, or he's going to be overseeing things on the spin-off side. So we like the management team. We also like the fact there was also an insider purchase into RYN just before the actual spin off is taking place. So we caught it in February that one of the lead directors, he spent about a quarter million dollars of his own money to increase his shares in RYN. So, well, that could be significant or it may not be, but we thought it was significant because he increased his uh, total compensation in RYN by over 30%. So um, we like the situation in total. It's actually in the model portfolio, so as what Ryan was highlighting previously and Jim uh, with regards to our model portfolio holdings. It's in there, and of course, RYN looks actually attractive in the when issue market as we speak. Um, as mentioned last week and also in the webinar, for reference, all of these points can be found in further detail in our 40, 50 page analysis report. Now let's move on to one of John Malone's three upcoming spin-offs this year alone, which is uh, Liberty Interactive Corp, L-I-N-T-A. Now this 14 billion market cap company, they're actually going to be creating two new tracking stocks. So the parent company, Liberty Interactive, is going to be renamed QVC Group. So QVC A and B, so they have A and B stocks. And the spin-off is going to be named Liberty Digital Commerce, so LDCA. Now, 
in the past, John Malone has successfully used these tracking stocks <clears throat> to highlight undervalued assets, as well as moving forward with these tax-free distributions to shareholders. And an example of this was the spin-off of Liberty Media Corp from Stars um, last year, STRZA. Um, that happened in January last year, and which Stars it actually doubled in size in less than a year. On the fundamentals, we see multiple catalysts in the long term, and QVC, 30% upside on a base case scenario, 50% upside bull case, whereas the spin-off entity, which is going to be the smaller side of the business, LDC, A slash B, 30% upside base case scenario, 100% upside on our bull case scenario, and there is a potential of a future spin in the making. So on that front, Linta is also another model portfolio holding and uh, looking to break up, uh, break apart by the end of summer, and in our expert view, it's worth holding pre-spin. Now, last but not least is our multiple expansion special situation story, which is ARCP, or American Realty Capital Properties. Now, ARCP is currently the largest pure play, you probably know or don't know this, but it's currently the largest pure play net lease REIT in the U.S. Um, it was previously going to spin off one of its multi-tenant portfolios this year, but actually they went the route of selling those assets to Blackstone. Now, on the fundamentals, we maintain our view that ARCP remains a multiple expansion story. Even if it's trading at a 30% discount to some of its larger cap pairs like O and Triple N, ARCP holds an attractive dividend of just over 8% dividend yield, and there's over 40% upside from our target price. Now, if you look at the insiders, um, if, in fact, we like the fact that Nick, Nicholas Schorz, um, ARCP's chairman and CEO, he currently owns around 1.7% stake in the company, um, where he has purchased around 2.2 million shares in the open market um, over the last uh, year or so, or $2.2 million worth, I should say, um, in shares in the, over, in the market, open market over the last year. And if you look at the insiders in total, um, they own a 2.46% stake in ARCP, which we think is quite significant. Plus, there's been, there's looks, there could be some activism going forward in the stock. Um, so our belief is that the management needs to slow down their large ticket transaction and actually let uh, you know, investors absorb some of the pro forma numbers over the next few quarters to come. With this, we foresee other multiple catalysts over the next few months, which should help the name trade at higher multiples. So, in closing, uh, these are situations, among others, which will give you the edge that you're looking for with ideas you can trust. Hopefully, that was of help or use for yourself, and I will finally pass it over to Ryan to, to finish up. Okay, thanks, John. So, what I would like to just leave on is the fact that people don't buy what we do, they, they, they buy why we do it. You know, we're here to save you time and give you the edge on ideas you can trust. So, you know, with a 73% average return from all of our stock recommendations since inception, you know, what we, doubt, what we go out to do is we go out to challenge the standards quo, as Jim would have said at the top, you know, by making the investment ideas we source and analysis we have both easy to understand, it's neatly designed, we think differently, and we always present our valuations and recommendations both personally and very much ahead of the uh, where, when the market reacts. And that's again how you will see situations that we call on our, our, our come to value. All the value that we, had, all the edge that we had in the book in the last uh, in, in the last in Q1. I'll be uh, I'll be interested to show you uh, if you're if you uh, if you're a TSR light subscriber, especially. Wait until you see our, wait until you see net, um, the the, uh, the results of net, uh, this month. So we are, you know, ultimately we're here to give you the edge on ideas you can trust. Now, I do want to point out, you know, well, we're we're not for everybody. We're not for the think about it or the considerers. Uh, we're for the people who want to act, who want to make a return on their investments. Clients ultimately stay with us because they recognise that we're seriously interested in their success. So, lastly. If you've connected with anything, uh, say anything we've shared today, then just email us um, immediately after this or equally call us on a number provided that you can see here. When we speak personally, it will only be about how we can deliver you an edge with the ideas you can trust.
what you'll see lastly here on the screen is our top three idea generators that we produce every Monday and it's for and, uh, and if you'd like to see these feel free give us a call as I said and we'll be more than happy and, uh, and, and delighted to run you through a few of the ideas and, uh, and see how we can interact there but when we do more of these if you like it let us know I uh, hope you've enjoyed it thank you very much